Today I'm looking at the extremely popular Sony A6300. Almost every professional or semi-professional camera on the market comes with a caveat of some kind. Canon's semi-pro lineup doesn't shoot 4K video. Panasonic has smaller micro four-thirds sensors, which aren't as good in low light. The Sony A7 series is just plain expensive, and Nikon cameras come with a mixture of all these issues. The Sony A6300 tries to fill all those gaps. It's a compact, mirrorless camera with a large APS-C sensor, shoots 4K video, and comes in at a surprisingly affordable price point. So let's find out if it lives up to all its hype. For starters, the Sony A6300 is almost identical to its older cousin, the A6000, and shares a resemblance to its cheaper cousins, the A5000 and A5100. And thanks to this heritage, it's a very compact camera. And just to show you how compact it is, I have it next to my Panasonic G7, which is itself smaller than most entry-level Canon or Nikon DSLRs. And much like a DSLR, the Sony comes with a large APS-C size sensor covered by its stock 16 to 50 millimeter power zoom lens. Now this is of course a Sony E-mount camera, so you can swap the stock lens out with any E-mount lens. I'll leave links to some of my favorites below. The 6300 also has a chunky magnesium alloy body that's dust and moisture sealed. The grip is also nice and deep and allows you to shoot comfortably even with one hand. The buttons are also, for the most part, well laid out, and the dials have a nice feel and response to them. The only button design I'm not a big fan of is the movie record button. The button's placed awkwardly on the side of the rear grip and is also recessed a bit, making hitting the button even harder. Really wish Sony had placed this somewhere else, especially since the point of getting this camera is to shoot 4K video. The camera also has a built-in pop-up flash and hot shoe mount on top. The camera's main interface is its 3-inch screen, which seems to be bright enough to even use outdoors. The menu also seems to be laid out in typical Sony fashion, a bit confusing, but usable. The display isn't a touchscreen, which is kind of disappointing at this price, and it doesn't flip up, so it won't work as a vlogging camera. This is really meant to be used with the user behind the camera. And for that reason, it comes equipped with an electronic viewfinder, which is really helpful if you're shooting outdoors in the bright sunlight. The viewfinder also has an eye sensor, so you can switch seamlessly between the screen and viewfinder. The 6300 is powered by Sony's NP-FW50 battery, which lives in this compartment beneath the camera with the SD card. And what I really like about this compartment is that even if your camera is mounted to a quick change plate on your tripod, like the Manfrotto plate I have on here, you can still get the battery and SD card out without screwing the plate off. Now, what I'm not a big fan of is the fact that Sony doesn't include a standalone battery charger with a camera that costs almost over $1,000. Instead, they provide a micro USB cable that could end up damaging the charging port on your camera over time. I recommend investing in a standalone charger like this one so you can pull your battery out, swap it, and charge it when you need to. I'll leave a link to that charger kit below. And a note about the SD card, make sure to use an SD card with a high enough data write rate since this camera shoots 4K video at 100 Mbps. If you don't, your camera might freeze up when it's shooting video. I'll leave a link to the one I recommend in the description below this video. When it comes to both pictures and video, the camera focuses pretty quickly and accurately. Probably not as fast or as accurate as Panasonic cameras, but still pretty fast. When it comes to photos, it shoots pictures as large as 24 megapixels and stores them as either the JPEG, RAW, or both. And as you can see from these images taken with the kit lens, with the camera in the auto mode, the pictures are absolutely stunning. They're all DSLR quality images with fantastic color reproduction and an overall pleasing aesthetic to them. It also seems to expose images quite accurately, and thanks to the larger APS-C sensor, there's nice Nice soft bokeh in the background. When it came to low light, it performed just okay. The pictures were fine if you had a bit of light, as you can see in these images. Definitely not a camera I'd recommend for low light though. As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to video, this camera is jam-packed with features. In addition to being able to shoot 4K video at data rates of 100 Mbps and 60 Mbps, it also shoots 1080p video at 120 and 60 FPS for smooth slow-mo video. It also comes with more sophisticated features like zebra, focus peaking, 
and very impressively S-Log3 picture profiles for greater dynamic range. The 6300 also has a 3.5 millimeter mic port for an external microphone and an HDMI port in case you need to add an external monitor. And very importantly, the quality in the 4K mode at 100 Mbps was really impressive. The colors were well reproduced, everything was sharp and well exposed, and the shallow depth of field gave the video a nice cinematic touch. And all this footage was shot in the auto mode with no post-production or color grading. And I also wanted to see how it would perform against my Panasonic G7, which I really feel is one of the best video cameras for under a thousand dollars. And while the overall aesthetic of the G7 was probably more pleasing, the Sony A6300 seemed to handle highlights much better and there was more dynamic range to the video. I also liked the shallower depth of field on the Sony, which gave it a more cinematic look. The only thing I'm not a big fan of on the Sony is ergonomics. The articulating screen on the Panasonic G7, better button placement, the touch screen, and just overall better handling make it a much nicer camera to use. So should you buy the Sony A6300? Well, that all depends on what you plan to use it for. If compactness is a big deal and you need a large sensor camera to shoot 4K video and great photos, the 6300 is definitely for you. However, if ease of handling and ergonomics are bigger issues, I would recommend the Panasonic G85 if you plan on mostly shooting 4K video and the Canon SL2 if you plan to mostly shoot photos. I'll leave links to all three cameras below in case you're looking to buy one. If you already own one of these, please share your experience in the comments below. Hope this video was useful. If it was, please hit that like button and subscribe for more reviews, unboxings, and how-to videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.